I know that everyone has actually been through a lot of hot times here, especially with Toastmasters turning into contests and it's online anymore. Like every club is going online and everyone can't even do a basic handshake or even hugging people. But we want to keep this Toastmasters spirit ongoing and benefits of everyone around the world to connect stories. And I do know everyone's hardship. So I just wanted to do something for the community by starting this session because I know that I'm not the only talent out there. There's so many of you right now that's actually going through Zoom. So yes, so as for my role today, I'm not going to speak. You will hear stories from every panelist that's on the poster. Unless you want to ask me to speak, then you can raise your hand and say, Aaron, you should talk for five to seven minutes. I will talk for five to seven minutes. But today I'm going to be your host for tonight and introducing our panelists. For those of you who do not know our panelists, you can actually go to our Toastmaster International Forum page, whereby we have posted posters of our lovely panelists. The sequence of the panelists will be listed in the chat box right here. The first person that is going to present to us today will be Panos, followed by Selena, Anna, Roseanne, Sarah, and Joss. I will do the same practice for everyone. Let, let's, let's give a 30 seconds fame of letting them introduce a bit of themselves first before I give them my own version of introduction. Let's welcome Panos up the stage first. Introduce a bit of yourself. Hi, Panos. Hello, Toastmasters and guests. Um, my name is Panos, Panos Corelis, and I'm a Greek native. I became a Toastmaster in 2014 in Switzerland, in Zurich, and I've been a Toastmaster ever since. Very happy to be on. Then, about six months ago, I joined an online club called the Singapore Online English Toastmasters Club. And that's where I realized that Toastmasters goes way beyond just physical meetings. So ever since I have been championing the inclusion of this possibility that is offered to us through the technological channel in the regular Toastmasters experience. And that is what I'm here to share with you tonight. Thank you. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you very much. Give a round of applause. In our online meetings, we actually do have three little house rules, although I should have mentioned. The first one is, if you know that there's someone that's actually giving very good sharing, give a watch away. So everyone have her hands up and give a watch away. This is actually whereby we want to give support like applause. We just do not want to actually make it announced. The second part is that we actually put our hands to, and our ears because some of the panelists may forgot to actually unmute themselves, okay? This is a secret. So you actually put your hands over at the ear and then remind them, please unmute yourself if they are muted, okay? And finally, if you think that point is really good, give a thumbs up so that you can show a lot of support for our panelists for today. They have prepared a lot of wisdom to be sharing to everyone so that you can bring it home. Does that sound good to everyone? If you think it's good, give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Now, uh, every, every panelist will have 30 seconds to give, introduce a bit of yourself because before I introduce them later on on the stage so that we get the vibe of how they would know about themselves in no way. So next one I would like to welcome up the stage will be Selena. Hi, Selena. Hi, everyone. I'm Selena from Malaysia. I'm... I'm calling myself as a baby in Toastmaster. <laughs> I'm actually from a Mandarin club. Our, our meeting is conducted in a Mandarin language. So uh, thanks for having me tonight and I will share more later on. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you very much. Your virtual wave. This, that will be the same practice for all the time. Next, I would like to welcome the next important person. I will be, this is a person that always gives me a very nice vibe whenever I talk to her. Let's welcome Anna up the stage, please. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon on my behalf because here it's, uh, it's uh, middle of the day. I'm uh, based in Romania. I'm working as a communication consultant and I'm also a trainer. And I am, I think, um, what should I say? I'm a priest of Toastmasters because I'm a, telling everyone that what a wonderful team you meet here what wonderful people you you get to see here and you should try and join at least one club 
So I'm a big fan of Toastmasters and I'm quite involved at the time. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Aaron, for the invitation. Thank you very much. Give a virtual wave. And next is someone that I have met, I think, with the longest list of credentials, which it will take some time for me to introduce her. But then let her introduce a bit of her about herself so that we can get to bond with her. Okay, let's ro welcome Roseanne up the stage, please. Hi, Aaron. Hi, fellow Toastmasters. I am Roxanne from Curacao, and uh, I'm also a great fan of Toastmasters. So the reason I have so many credentials is because I'm fully active. I love this organization, and most of all, my slogan is that I'm ready to support, to assist, to serve, and help any fellow Toastmaster around the world. I am a mentor next to being a Toastmaster and a, a recognized district trained a trainer. So my dear fellow Toastmasters, I'm here to serve you once more and hope that we will have a wonderful and fruitful meeting this morning. It's now 8.30 in Curacao AM. <laughs> Back to you, Chairman Adam. Thank you very much, though. We see that as long as there are lots of time zones and you have just, just to connect with them, there will always be opportunities and possibilities. We have a friend here, Olive, right? You are always my best buddy, always coming by to live on TV, although it's not really live, but we always have different audiences coming by to support. The next person I would like to introduce is a very dear friend of mine that is basically, I've been working with her for a long, long time. Collaboration, a long, long time. Let's welcome Sarah up the stage, please. Yeah. Hi, my name is Sarah McPhee, and I'm in the afternoon in Copenhagen, uh, joining you out here all around the world now. Um, my experience has mostly been with like real live districted clubs, um, but with the yeah. we're not allowed to meet anymore, so our club had to move online quickly. And I'm extremely uh, thankful um, for the online opportunities. Yeah and all the members of online clubs who paved the way for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah, for showing us that time zones really don't matter a lot, especially everyone that's across the time zone right now. I'm at night here. And finally, the last person that I, I recently met, and I think that, wow, this person I got to invite on the panel is because he is very humorous as I am, although I'm not humorous, but he is impressive as well. So let's welcome us. Josh, up the stage, please. Hi, Aaron, and uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm in Singapore. My name is Josh. I've been with Toastmasters now for about five years. Uh, I love every minute of it, and I'm loving uh, being online with doing it as well. I'm really looking forward to chatting to everybody a little bit later in the, in the evening. It's uh, 8.40 p.m. here in Singapore. Just to let you know that the Prime Minister of Singapore today uh, introduced uh, Stay at Home. Uh, so... Come Tuesday, we join the rest of the world and, uh, and live indoors for a month. So uh, I hope everybody's doing well and I hope everybody's staying safe. So I will chat to you a little bit later. Thank you, Aaron. Back to you. Thank you very much, though. So I'll also present many, many unsung heroes in this room right now because you being here is being an unsung hero because everyone will bring something back home and will spread the word, spread a lot of wisdom so that you will help other Toastmasters. Sound good, everyone? Thank you. So now is the time whereby every panelist will shine. The first person I'd like to welcome up the stage is a guy, a gentleman, that I find for the first time I met him, it was like, who is this gentleman over here? He always speaks a different accent every time he speaks with me. And I'm thinking about, hmm, as the Dana Jaya actually say, I see something in him. And I always love the fact that he is a very impressive individual. Uh, after chatting with him a couple of times, I think that, wow, we bonded and clicked on that moment very finally because he is the winner of Singapore Online Toastmasters contest. So he's a representative for Undistricted. So give a, round, give a wave for him first at the very base because there's only one person that only represents an Undistricted uh, contest for every online club. And he's... One that is out of many other online clubs to represent, to go to war headquarters to compete. Now, he also is a member of Toastmasters in 2014, which makes him a six-year-old kid. Well, 
no, I wouldn't say kid, but the thing is that he is always very friendly and enjoyable. He is also a member of HAU Athens Toastmaster Club and also a president once in Zurich Toastmasters back in 2016. He also is a vice president of education in that club in 2015. So, wow, I get to know this person a bit more now. Do you want to know him now? Do you want to know more about his sharings? So, everyone, let's give a round of applause to the best practice and sharings by panels. Thank you so much, Aaron. Like, thank you. Once I catch my breath after being introduced in such a way by Aaron, I can share with you, and I'm happy to share with you that online has made my experience richer. Not only that, it has renewed my interest in Toastmasters. I'll do my best now to be brief, although I can get uh, very excited talking about my online experience. So let's see what is most relevant today. First, let's start with three aspects that have troubled me in the beginning of my online journey. The first aspect has to do with reproducing the feeling, the club experience. The second aspect was, what about guests? when my home club, the HEU Athens Toastmasters Club in District 109, would go online eventually. And the third aspect has to do with processes. We all know how to run a physical meeting. But how does this translate into the online world? In reverse order now, when it comes to processes, after joining an online club, I realized that we do not need to reinvent the wheel. Some have done this work before us, for us, in this atmosphere of sharing knowledge within Toastmasters. Aaron is a brilliant example of this. There is a script for nearly everything. When it comes to contests where there are a strict set of rules applies, Aaron is the go-to person because he's taking the time to build every possible scenario. All right. Aaron perhaps is nodding in disagreement. So, okay, let me reduce the, the weight of responsibility on your shoulders, Aaron. Aaron is not the go-to person. Aaron is a go-to person when it comes to contests. All right. So, contests have a strict framework. However, we have collectively now collected enough experience to know what the working recipe is. For all of us that are going to be transferring our physical division contests now, because I believe that for most of us, the division contest is coming up. There is a way to do it. Tomorrow, Saturday, the division B of District 109 will be holding their first ever online contest. And I can tell you with certainty that working day and night, they are 99.9% .9 ready to run a well-managed show. And the 0.1% is reserved for Murphy and his law. But we also would like to think that we are ready for that. So again, Transitioning online from within Toastmasters, you have support. From what I learned from the Singapore Online Club, I'm happy to share with you that we have now hosted three online meetings in my physical club in Athens. And these were the first three meetings that we ever did online since its charter date back in 2005. And the feedback and the response that we receive from the club members and guests exceeds the enthusiasm that we would get in the past. And we were, we were doing very well in the past, but I can tell you that technology opens up more possibilities to engage on online. And what do I mean by engagement? It's all about the vibe. 
It is all about the vibe. Why do we join Toastmasters? Is it because we want to improve ourselves? Is it because we need to fix ourselves? No, those are easy answers. I believe that most of us have joined Toastmasters because of the feeling, because of the club experience, because we were exposed to what Toastmasters stands for. And then we realize that we miss it. That's why we keep doing more of it. That's why some of us nowadays attend online meetings every day, perhaps twice a day. How can you be replicating the club experience online? Well, first of all, there are many ways to engage. I want to show some of them. You can clap online. You can have eye contact online. And even better, some physical limitations like that come from the size and shape of a room are removed online. Like right now, I just made eye contact with Sarah, with Anna, with Thomas, with Juan, with Rachel in a split second. I don't see this anymore because I used to as a limitation. I see it as an enhancement when it comes to eye contact. And this is only one example. There's more. We could take that in the Q&A later. And number three, guests. In our district, District 109, we have a motto. We say, trust, thrive, together. Trust has to do with the core values, respect, integrity, service, and excellence. We have achieved that and we're maintaining that actively. Together, now we're together more than ever. In this room, I bet we have people, we have participants from dozens of nationalities. But what about Thrive? Thrive means to grow. How can our club grow under these circumstances? Well, first of all, today we have overcome the limitation of time and space. What do I mean by that? I do not need to travel to join a meeting based in Hong Kong using Aaron's physical location as the alleged base of the meeting. I'm sitting at my hometown on the countryside in Greece. I'm connecting to all of you. No commuting, no traveling needed. Click of a button. Every Friday in my Singapore online meetings, which I am sacrificing today because it's taking, time, taking place at the same time, but it's for a good cause. Every Friday I click, I push a button and I get transferred from Greece to Singapore. Not only that, right now, I was trusted with the position of vice president membership in a Singapore club. Look at that. How together are we? You have a Greek vice president membership for an online club in Singapore. How far can we go with that? I see endless opportunities in front of us. Having guests, we can now promote and reach more people than ever. And not only that, I believe that we have to be interested to become interesting. Whenever I join another meeting as a guest, and yesterday, for example, Thursday, I visited the Astro Toastmasters Club in Singapore. It has 20 years history. And in the evening, I had the chance to visit Tallinn Toastmasters. If Tallinn so, sounds unfamiliar, it's the capital of Estonia. I would have never had this chance before. You know what I did? I invited those friends to our meetings. I was interested in them, and now they can reciprocate my visit. You have to be interested to be interesting. Never again have we been able to introduce so many personal aspects in our Toastmasters experience. 
And I would like to leave you with a challenge. How many opportunities can you be creating for your club and be making the most out of your online club experience? Back to you, Aaron. Thank you very much, panels. I'm sure that some of you may be very inspired by panels on his sharings though. So remember, if you have any questions as well, feel free to type in the chat box. And after which, at the Q&A session after that, we will actually gather all this question and we ask our panelists one by one. How does that sound? Okay, great. Now the next person I'm gonna invite is someone that I never imagined I will meet because what, what do I mean by that? It means that if I don't travel to that place, I will not be able to meet this person. And knowing this person and knowing her for like how many, I know her for one year, literally we never connect. We literally don't talk until this coronavirus strikes in and we become a nice bridge of conversation. And when we have this nice bridge of conversation, she asks a lot of questions about online and stuff like that. And she becomes my mentee. Think about how, cross mentoring goes by from a long way and this person is very amazing in the way that she always have a very lovely smile and always love to joke around but let's uh, introduce a bit about herself so this lady here uh, is a very impressive lady because she is an nlp practitioner for those of you who do not know what an nlp practitioner is it's more on the side of psychology and then clinical psychology in between i think i think because i'm not that yet and she is a member since 2018 in july in saradan mandarin toastmasters in malaysia now she's also the vice president of her own club and she also win the area contest as the second runner-up for mandarin and she also wins the table topic champion wow uh in her club uh, in this year so let's give a round of applause to this amazing lady, Best Practices and Sharings by Selena Oi. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> Here again, like I mentioned just now, I'm calling myself as a baby in Toastmaster because when I'm doing the panelist poster, I realized that, oh, how baby am I? For like 13 years, Aaron, 20 years over, or everyone is more experienced than me. So I feel so blessed and for the invitation for Aaron for me to share here. First, when I'm joined, like mentioned just now, uh, I actually newly joined 2018 July. When I joined in Toastmaster that moment, when I heard the Toastmaster of the day introduce about Toastmaster, they mentioned about uh, Toastmaster is an international NGO. And it's covered 16,000 over club in the world. I was like, really? I'm just seeing about 30 people over here in the club. Yeah, I mentioned 300 over 1,000 people in the worldwide for this NGO. Okay, let's find out. So after I'm joining, I, I like to, I like to curious about how's others Toastmaster doing? How's other clubs doing? So I started my clubbing life. But you know, when you're traveling along, it's taking your time, taking your energy. So I mean, like afterwards, travel about, uh, travel about two hours in the traffic to reach that club. And even when I'm doing my travel trip, I will try to allocate at least once. I need to, I need to visit the club locally. So I visited Taiwan, I visited even uh, last few months at Australia, Perth. I, I tried to, I try to learn and I'm just curious about how other clubs doing in a worldwide basis. Only except for my mentoring club, we are only 20 over people, but in our area, we do have a lot of mentoring club. So this traveling limitation is like limiting me to know how this international NGO doing. With this coronavirus, it's like giving me an opportunity to look around, to learn around, to visit around, like Panos mentioned just now. Yes, I do. Three times per day to visiting other clubs meeting. Twice. I even went for South Africa. I went for 
uh, Australia. I went for ways, uh, Greece. Yeah, Greece. I went that night. So it's so excited when I'm coming around the world for the moment now. So it's like a, a opportunity door open for me to rope around. When come back to my Malaysia, my own club, because I'm the VPE, uh, during Malaysia, we, we have the announcement of the MCO movement control on 16 March, I believe. So my meeting is on 17. Try to imagine. The announcement is on 16. Our meeting is on 17. So we are actually doing the normal practice to prepare for our physical meeting. And on 15 itself, we need to make a decision. Shall we carry on? Or shall we move into online? So by, third, by 14 March, we know that Zoom is available for us. We know that we can run our meeting online. On 15, we try to gather our member to try online, know the basic, how to go in, how to log in, how to unmute yourself, how to start your video. 17, we have our first online meeting. And we make it very successful because we're hitting almost 100 people, 100 participants in our meeting. In our district, we, are, we can say that we are the first online meeting in our district for Mentoring Club. So it makes me so excited. And we show that this coronavirus, it won't stop us to run the Toastmaster meeting. It won't stop us to continue learning. We can find any way out to serve ourselves in Toastmaster as a as core member. Because we need to take care of our member to be healthy, to be safety, even you are attending a meeting. So of course, during the meeting, during the online meeting, I believe all of you here have the experience during the online meeting. Everything is like under your control, but in fact, it's not. You thought you can ask everyone, be ready, unmute yourself, mute yourself. You have a mock run before the meeting. But when it happened, it still happened. When we try to run our meeting, we call out our role player, unmute yourself, provide your role play, explain yourself, or introduce yourself. It, it still happened. It still happened that the, the member is like talking to you like, Yes, exactly happened. You try your best to on, on the spot call them up, but they never answer you. So <laughs> you have no chance. As a Toastmaster of the day, you need to unmute them, mute them. How many times? They're ignorance at all. So you, you need to take care of them. You need to replace them. You need to represent them to, to, to explain what actually the role player. So there's a lot of fun that we need to like be more flexible. We, we have a lot of issues, especially when it comes to the timer part. We know we can change the virtual background. We know we can adjust for the share screen. But how about the mobile user? How about the timer that the member willing to take up the timer role play, but they are actually using the mobile only? So during our meeting, I, I would suggest let's play aloud. Let's have fun. So as maybe as a ladies, we have a lot of growth, right? We like to shop a lot. So I even suggest my members, take out your growth. When yellow, when green, just show yourself green. It can be a lot of different way. You can just show up anything. Okay, orange, I saw my color. And slowly it will become red color. So there is many ways for you if you want to run the meeting. Especially in the Toastmaster, we just have fun and keep on learning here. So, this is the way that I'm trying to make my club be happening, be cheerful, be joyful attending the meeting. So, for myself, I have a very embarrassed experience when I'm attending online in other countries, like I mentioned just now. 
Because like you see now, our participants, you may see a lot of people is hiding themselves without showing them. So when I'm attending overseas, because I'm a mentoring club member, I, I'm not really well in English speaking. So I will hiding myself off my video. At that moment, is at 12 midnight from Malaysia. They are having their meeting. So I try to hide myself. And who knows? They forced me to on my video. And I thought they asked me to unmute myself. I accidentally on it. And I am actually wearing my sleepwear. So I quickly off myself. So a message here is, yeah, online is so convenient for all of us now. You can sit at your own place, your comfort zone, and just by one click, you can go anywhere. But please prepare. This is also a Toastmaster meeting. So <laughs> you need to be ready. Even if it's online, but treat it as a physical meeting. So there can be a lot of fun. And during this sharing, actually, I, I, I need to show my appreciate, my gratitude to Aaron and a lot of members, a lot of seniors members who are supporting us for this online to, to support us to carry on. Back to you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for selling us. I, I start to get the senior status where I need to wear a beard and stuff like that. And hiding behind the window because I'm wearing on, I'm actually ha being hung up on the wall. Actually, we had a joke yesterday for, for those of you who know what the joke is, is that I'm always being hung up the wall. For Asians, you definitely know it. <laughs> for friends around the world, being hung up the wall means that you have passed away. <laughs> Just a joke. Okay. But now, yeah, we have heard two sharings already. We saw a couple of questions. Don't worry, we'll make sure that they will be asked in the end if that question is a bit with it. Now, the next person I'm going to introduce is someone I think that without even talking to her, you can see that this person is very fun. It's just that you have to pick her at the right timing. If you pick her during her sleeping hours, then she'll be like, oh, hi, how are you doing? And the situation is like, oh, you, you, won't, you won't see the fun vibe there. So who is this person? This person is, uh, has achieved quite a lot of stuff. Uh, let, me, let me do something different for this introduce, uh, introducer. It's I share screen. Now you see a bit of uh, credentials. She's uh, currently an ACB, ACG, ALB, MS5, finish, finish of one path, uh, EC3, and also a member of Cyrus Toastmasters. She's also an area director in Division D in District 110. So think about all these possibilities connecting to the worldwide. And she's also the District 95 Public Relations Manager during back in the years of 2017 to 2018, because I know who is the current one, which is Kirk. And she also did a lot of things, not just this profile though, because I would like to share my personal opinion on her is that she has given me the vibe that as long as you have this individual or, or someone with this vibe, you can make the whole meeting interesting. It's just like having a good host, having a good vibe. This person will show you how it can be done. So no sort of expectation for Anna right now. Right? So, you're fine. Okay. So let's welcome our next panelist, Anna, for best practices and sharings. Thank you, Aaron. Wow, after this presentation, now I get the butterflies in my stomach. But as a wise man once said, the secret behind those is to teach them how to fly in a formation. Well, this is what happened for me. I was scared of, to, of public speaking and I was never imagined myself entering competition or even speaking in front of all of you. But for me, Toastmaster opened the door to so many possibilities. Right now, I'm uh, changing my Zoom to different area codes in the world. I meet people I could barely imagine two months ago to meet them. I'm learning about me, how can I be more creative? How can I, like, how can I have visual contact, like Pano said, with everyone? Well, it's easy. Right now, I'm looking into your eyes. And creativity, well, it's up to you guys. 
being in an online meeting, you have so, so many advantages. First of all, time. It's the biggest resources we have. And imagine now you are not only in your club learning, you can go to Greece, you can go to Netherlands, you can go to America just by one push of a button. And that's easy because you will see there's so many netiquettes. How should I wear? How should I behave? How should I listen? How can I become a better speaker if I'm from front of a screen? Well, use your imagination and just give your best. This is the only thing that everybody expects of you. Do your best. Because here in Toastmasters, we are here to offer you support. And if that's the best you can do, we are cheering for you. Also, think about all the, all the possibilities of learning. I mean, come on, who would have thought two, three months ago that you will be stuck to the front of a computer learning? Well, no, because I'm only doing online learning. That's it. I know that. I'm not going to stay in front of a computer to learn public speaking or leadership skills. Oh, come on, guys. Let's get serious. Well, we are doing that right now because in mentoring session, in coaching session, even in our weekly meetings we are learning because you know like you said think about all the ways you can become a better timer what about when you are rooting for somebody to join the meeting and become an impromptu speaker show them how to do it use everything that you have in order to make them feel secure, make them feel comfortable. I saw in my club people who were so frightened of having a speech in front of the club. And you know what I saw online? They were so good. Because being there comfortable in their own chair, in their own living room or in their own office, you could feel the vibe. You could feel there was no pressure on their shoulders. They felt comfortable. And you know what? They enjoyed so, so much. And you could see the vibe. You could feel the vibe. You can hear the vibe. And that is an amazing experience of being a digital traveler because this is what we all are these days. We are not only a digital Toastmasters, we are digital travelers and digital learners because we learn how to use our creativity in online. We learn new things like applauding or like, hey, unmute yourself. And you know what we learned about us? And I think that's the most important thing. We learned that we can adapt. Yes, we can adapt. And nothing can stop us we are, if we are passionate about something. And the thing we had in common, the love of public speaking and leadership, now unites us even more because we are not struggling with the borders. We are not struggling with our travel schedule. We are not, we are not even struggling with our work office hours because at one click away, I can connect with anybody. Because of coronavirus or due to coronavirus, whatever you want to feel it, I met Aaron. I get the chance to talk with all of you and I, I heard so many beautiful stories. Some of them early in the morning when I was having my coffee and yes, like Aaron said, I'm not a morning person. Some of, this, some of them during late at night. But doesn't matter the time, doesn't matter the, the fatigue but because at the end, we are here to learn. We are here to improve ourselves. We are here to become a better version of ourselves. And think of digital learning and digital traveling as the best tool you have at this moment to learn to, be, to adapt, to be creative, to lead others, to service others, and to improve yourself. I mean, come on. 
really they think that being online it's a barrier of communication nah we are proving it daily and the most important part is if you put your soul into it then everybody will feel the vibe so give 100 percent and be there with your heart and soul to the people in toastmasters aaron the stage is yours i was actually expecting more <laughs> <laughs> It's still I green will, car, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I will. I will make. A, I will make a, a a game with you if you allow me, because I still go, have go time. Ahead. I go didn't ahead. want to. Okay, so I will share the. I will share a link with you in the chat, and I will ask everybody to join me there. Uh, let me see if you can see my screen. Okay, you see my screen. You will go here and add a sticky note wow. and tell me where are you from. I'm from Bucharest and I will put my sticker here. So feel free to join me and see where are you from. Wow. <laughs> I forgot about this function. <laughs> <laughs> Come again, how to allocate myself? Uh, go, go in the chat. Uh, you have the link there. Yes. And then when you enter, there's a sticky note here and there will appear a pop-up. Okay. Use uh, your it. name or just the place you are, you are and place it on the map. So, you know, remember talking about creativity. I think I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this is a really good one. Yeah, being creative. And this is an amazing, it's an amazing icebreaker. If you are a Toastmaster of the meeting, start with a, start with a game. Make them feel connect with, connected with you. Make them feel there. This is creativity. So guys, use it. Okay, let's get back to you, Aaron. I think People I will. are still let playing let there, guys. I, I think let, let them play first. <laughs> let's let, let them continue playing for a bit first. <laughs> okay, so everybody's enjoying that now. Okay, so guys, whenever you're ready, if, look, uh, somebody is removing the map. Okay, I will remove the map and see everybody here. Everybody's there. I will share the screen with you again because I removed the map. And now we have so many beautiful sticker notes. Look, everybody's here. Someone take a screenshot then. <laughs> I will do it. And the is jamboard.google.com and you can use it. Just be sure that the when you are sharing the link, it can be uh, edited by anybody and you can free to use it whenever you feel the need to do so. Are we ready to get back to the Zoom meeting? We are ready, don't worry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will stop sharing and I am back with you guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause to Anna. Uh, I, because of that, I have to give three of my clones to say thank you very much on that front. Now, we always love creativity in online. As long as you have creativity, you have the energy level, you can bring a lot of vibes. And I think I summarized her and as a key point in one sentence is that anywhere is your stage. Don't be frightened. 
just embrace that fear. That's what we are Toastmasters for. Try new things. Remember in level four pro pathways in managed online meetings, that's actually one of the methodologies there. Now for the next person, I have to really invite her in a very long and lengthy way because this person I really admire after I read her credentials. Okay, I admire a lot of people without reading credentials as well. Don't worry, disclaimer. But when I read her credentials, it's like, wow, there are lots of things I can talk about. <laughs> she is uh, one person that is currently giving a lot to the society, giving a lot to the Toastmaster community. Why do I say so? Because she is a past district leader. When I say past district leader, meaning that she is also a past district PR in her, in her own district. She also is the uh, assistant area for director in, uh, in terms of program uh, quality programming in the area, area itself. She's currently the vice president of uh, public relations and also the treasurer of her club called Kibara Chaha Toastmaster Club. Sorry, I do start to, I apologize, Rosanna. <laughs> Uh, she's also a former District 81 Public Relations Officer, District 81 Secretary, District 81 Division 8 our Governor. So basically, I will see everywhere, as long as I go to District 81, I will see her, right? So <laughs> she appears online right now with us. She also has been a sponsor for quite a lot of clubs and also mentor for a lot of clubs like Pertero Rico Toastmaster Club, a uh, sponsor for Aru. Ba Toastmaster Club, I apologize for reading this. Uh, club mentor for Nida Pinto Toastmaster Club, and also a chapter member of Concota Toastmaster Club and lots of other clubs as well. So with that in mind, you can see that she has contributed a lot in just really nurturing the society and community. So without further ado, Rosanna, are you ready? Yes. and. Uh, Let's give her a round of applause and remind her that she has to unmute herself. <laughs> yes, I was trying to unmute myself. <laughs> I, I, I need to just one minute because I don't know what happened, but uh, I was uh, kicked out of the meeting. Uh, so I had, to, I had to restart everything, but we're there. Don't worry, you just showed us one of the best practices. Yes. And it is part of my it is part of my presentation now. No worries, take your time. Yes, just one minute. Okay. Okay. Best practice and sharing is by Rosanna. Just like in the traditional meetings, we need like a one minute. <laughs> One minute of fun. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, okay, I would like to share with you now the PowerPoint presentation. You can click on share screen and then you will have it. Yes. There we go. This is preparation to the limits. <laughs> yes. Okay, there we go. Wow, what an opportunity to spread our wings, but you need to be fast. Toastmaster Aaron and fellow Toastmasters, this is only, there is only two options available in this new area that we are confronting. Or you're on, or you are not on. It is now the moment to show that we are unstoppable and truly, my wish is to spread my wings and this seems to become a reality. We are up to a future vision for our organization because online meetings have become a major resource for the Toastmasters organization. There is a need to start with rigorous technology learning processes and it is a true matter for us to surpass these difficult moments to survive. But we need to be fast to keep up with the demands of the meeting invitations. And I have to tell you, 
I have received a lot of invitations, but I'm coping with all of them. I'm going to share with you three aspects, my experiences, activities, and challenges. Of course, we do have challenges, don't we? So that is why I am going to share this with you this evening. After some weeks, I have realized that I have learned a lot while using Zoom.com. Among others, I have learned how to plan and organize online meetings. As I told you in my introduction, I am a trainer, but that doesn't mean that because I'm an experienced trainer for more than 30 years, that now by using Zoom, this is something different. It is something different. So that is why I am trying to pursue and learn as much as possible. I learned how to use the different features and norm. That wasn't easy at the beginning. It was all new for me because I have worked always with, with, uh, I have always worked with uh, PowerPoints, with uh, Skype and all other softwares. But this was very new for me. I learned how to use camera snaps but virtual backgrounds. I'm still trying to figure out how this could be done better. Group breakout rooms and always be representable with my pin, with my Toastmaster pin during the online meetings and make sure that my video is on so that you can see who you are connecting with. The meetings and some of the activities that I have experienced up to now are club meetings, education meetings, executive meetings, even area contests, and district executive council meetings. Of course, there are so many challenges on the way. Yes, a lot. But still, I'm trying to cope with them because I want to stay connected and available. So the time zone scheduling is sometimes a little exhausted, but if you have the love and passion for this organization, then there is no time zone that could ever stop you to be unstoppable. Interruptions with the internet connection. I just experienced one. So as you can see, this is not always in our hands, but we need to cope with it as much as possible. Compatibility issues, compatibility issues. That too. Proper software and tools like proper microphone, you know, all those features that we really need to make these meetings possible. And there is no pause during the meetings like we were accustomed with during the traditional meetings. Now we have personal breaks during the meetings where we just put on on or off of our video system. <laughs> but some great solutions, there are some great solutions for some of these challenges. It is important to always apply the four Ps. Plan, prepare, practice, and present. Consider continuous learning, participating at webinars training, or just Google for the right information. I've noticed that by Googling, I have learned a lot. Have quality video conferencing software and tools. I'm looking forward to complete this one. And use a time zone converter. That is very important, especially when you are very active online. But there is always a positive side of everything. Yes, of course. Join any club around the world. That is what I'm doing. Yes, I'm joining every club that I can find online. I'm even now active in a WhatsApp app where there are a lot of invitations strolling down. And I'm trying to cope with all of them. Have more connection, interaction, and communication with others. Build more relationship. Have family and friends join the meetings. The possibility to record the meetings automatically, share and receive abilities, experiences, and knowledges. 
There is no spending of gas fees because I don't need to leave the home. And there is no spending of consumption fees because during our meetings here in Curacao, we do have a break where we pay extra fees for the consumptions during each meeting. Is that your case as well? And of course, we just continue to spread our wings. So this is a way how to continue spreading our wings. To conclude, I can finish with the following statement. We just need to have a strong internet connection, believe me, otherwise it doesn't work. Be accessible and available. Have the passion and love for continuous learning. Take the courage to approach others. Stay always connected and have lots of fun. Because most of all, we need to have lots of fun while we are meeting. Like right now, we are sending chats to one another to say from where we are, to share some personal information. We even had a, had a chance to, the opportunity to test a, 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 a game by Anna, which I love very much, Anna. So as you can see, there is so much that we can do online and not even the coronavirus can stop us from continuing being a Toastmaster and reaching out to all our fellow Toastmasters around the world. I am pleased, I am honored. I have met so many Toastmasters during these three last weeks by just being at home and connecting with others around the world. And this is what it is all about. We're not perfect. We don't need to be perfect because at Toastmasters, we are facing a learning process. And because we are participating in the learning process, this means that we are all learning. So we may fail. We can have failures around the road, but it doesn't matter because we have each other to reach for. If I don't know how to use any feature online, I can reach Toastmaster Aaron. I can see his backgrounds are so funny and I am enjoying each one of the backgrounds that he is showing us. I cannot still do that, even being a professional trainer. So Toastmaster Aaron, you will be hearing from me because there is so much to learn, fellow Toastmasters. I hope that I have a little bit inspired and motivate you to spread your wings and reach for other Toastmasters around the world. It is so pleasantly, it is so beautiful, and I am looking for, forward to hear more from Hong Kong, from Sweden, from Malaysia, from all those countries that I've seen are now participating. Have a truly blessed day. And for me, Roxanne from Curacao, this was a wonderful and fruitful moment to be among you all. Toastmaster Aaron. Thank you very much. Give a round of applause for Roseanne for making, wow, don't, don't hammer me, <laughs> but I'm okay. <laughs> Thank you very much though. That, that's the elephant for you to give you virtual hugs. You know that now with coronavirus, you cannot hug anyone. So we have an elephant desk for you, don't worry. She will, it's a he, right? Yeah, it's a he that will give you a hug, don't worry. Now, we, we have seen different speakers, different panelists have different speaking styles and also presentations. You get to know all this through online meetings. So go out there, explore the options. There are lots of things for you to go for. Obviously, online meeting is not that simple as it looks because we have to prepare a lot of things. So one tiny tip is do rehearsals. Now, the next person I'm going to introduce is uh, a lady who I have been seeing lots of lovely smiles. And the first time I engaged her, I was astounded. The reason why is very simple, because that time I asked her bluntly when I don't know her at all, that can I be an area director for virtual? 
if you remember that story on that part, I was actually trying to be a air doctor virtually across the globe so that you can actually support clubs that doesn't have any air doctors. So think about all this imaginations that you can help any parts of the world with your time and your passion. Now, this person is, I would say, has been delegating her time in Toastmasters as long as I know her. Uh, she has been very delicate, responsible, and a well, great networker. She is a member of Toastmasters in 2015 and part of a club called Copenhagen Toastmaster Club. She is currently the Vice President of Education in her club right now. Uh, educational title is ACB ALS. So I was wondering, you already give lots of speeches already. Why don't you go for ACG? <laughs> don't worry. It's just a joke. Without further ado, let's welcome our next panelist. Best practices and sharings from Sarah Mapperi. Hey. Hi, thank you very much, Aaron. And I'll just say um, the first time I ever met Aaron was online. And together with Mark Snow um, from Australia, Aaron was giving a um, webinar online meeting um, hybrid about pathways. Um, because we were working on rolling out pathways and both uh, Mr. Snow and Aaron had um, completed an amazing amount of pathways and I'm like what can you complete all of those pathways and then I found out Aaron had a secret it was called an online club um, and then back then I was working as a club growth director in district 95 and we did have a few people asking about online clubs and I always had to tell them, I'm sorry, I can't help you um, because undistricted clubs, you know, aren't part of the district, but connect with some of your local Toastmasters and maybe they can help you. And there was even one club they were starting to, trying to start in Bavaria in Munich. And um, the person starting it was living in Frankfurt. Um, and then I heard they were kind of doing remote meetings, trying to build up members. I'm like, oh, okay, fine, we'll let these guys figure it out. And you know what? That club actually did charter, um, but just this year. Um, so we, we've had some clubs doing these remote meetings. And about Aaron um, being a remote area director, I thought that was perfectly fine um, because up here in Northern Europe, uh, we have quite a long distance to our clubs. Like when I was an area director one time, um, those five clubs I was looking after, they were spread out all over uh, Denmark, you know, one was like 300 kilometers away, another was 250 kilometers away. Um, so we were using online tools um, to meet. Um, but back then, Zoom didn't really exist. Uh, and we had something called um, GoToMeeting. Have any of you uh, experienced GoToMeeting? Um, I, I'm sure you guys remember the days when you have a problem with your computer and then you're on your telephone and people fall out. Um, but we entered uh, those days. Uh, we also used Messenger for things, um, but sometimes there was a lot of background noises uh, and sounds, but, but we still did endure. So what I'm saying is, and there's lots of ways of doing these things. Um, I have another memory at Copenhagen Toastmasters Club. It was like 6.45 in the morning. This was in 2016. The club president rings to me, hey, the school's closed today. Uh, should we cancel the meeting? Okay, this was 6.45 in the morning. And I have one principle. Meetings. They go, right? It doesn't matter how many people, you keep meeting because our club meets once a week. I'm like, and that day, I'm kind of shy about giving speeches. Uh, so that's why I'm not much further from the legacy program. And I was scheduled um, to give a speech that day. I'm like, oh, wait a second. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should just skip today. But I thought, wait a second, there's three other people in the speech program. Uh, a member of a club found a venue for us and there were actually four speakers. The meeting was fantastic. Um, but with online clubs, we don't have this challenge anymore. <laughs> you know, um, school's not gonna be closed as long as the internet's up, as long as the electricity is on, um, online meetings are, are out there. Uh, so, the, so the challenge, as long as we have the internet, as long as we have uh, electricity is stable, it will just be our own um, schedule that is preventing us. In District 95 this year, our motto is let's learn together. 
um, which I think is a really nice uh, motto. And um, there's a gentleman that's visited our club a few times, and this, um, you probably don't know much about Denmark, but Copenhagen is in the eastern part, and then there's some water, and then there's Sweden. He lives in Sweden, and then when the border got closed, uh, he told me that he was really disappointed because he was afraid uh, with all these lockdowns and closures, um, that he had lose Toastmasters. But the online meeting showed up and his eyes kind of like sparkled on the screen. And he said, now there's just so many things to learn about Zoom. Um, and he also just told me yesterday that his um, improv class has finally been moved online. Uh, so he's looking forward to um, keeping active there with that. Um, so about online meetings, I think I would um, uh, talk maybe about uh, safety, um, offering one-to-one -one training, um, contests, um, and club coaching uh, for low membership clubs uh, in your areas and districts. Um, I'm, I'm an online Toastmasters club newbie. I'm just getting started. I know very little, uh, but I'm learning every single day um, about safety. Um, like yesterday evening, uh, my partner, he said to me, hey, Sarah, um, I just noticed on the 9 p.m. news that um, the FBI is after Zoom with some security details. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, we know about some of these. A, you know, what usually happens on a Toastmasters meeting isn't state security. Um, so, so, it, so it doesn't really matter who's uh, really listening to what's happening on our meetings. Um, whereas in a business situation, this could be a little more important. Um, so just be careful what you say on a Zoom meeting. Um, and then um, the other one was um, encryption for non-recorded uh, meetings. That was a small thing. And it looked like they were patching some of those other things, um, the safety things. But there were still the Zoom bombing and National Public Radio, um, the American one, it has a nice article about um, Zoom bombing uh, about someone doing a PhD <laughs> who had someone who showed up. So make sure you use the waiting room uh, feature so you know who's coming in and out of your meetings. And the host, you can always uh, remove obnoxious people. And like in our club, we have screen share because it's just too much work that one person has to funnel all of these um, things through. Um, um, so, but you can always remove people with the safety there. Um, offering one-to-one -one training. Um, I had a member of the club, uh, another club, who's going to be an evaluator next week, um, and he said he'd never used um, that before. And so I said, okay, we can just have a one-to-one -one meeting and um, uh, we can um, uh, check things out there. Um, so offer one-to-one -one meetings to your um, members that are just taking baby steps uh, with Zoom um, because they might feel more comfortable and you can let them try out things. Um, there is a feature under Zoom settings if you've got the Zoom Pro uh, so you can show the Zoom screen live um, because normally it's off. Um, so that's a good setting also if you're like uh, teaching your training your Zoom master. Contests are complex. Uh, look at Aaron's notes. He's got like 120 pages of uh, uh, really good notes. Um, another thing, uh, Toastmasters.org has these really nice virtual screens. Um, I was at in Stuttgart, Germany, uh, the E1 uh, area English contest Tuesday evening, and the um, contest chair, he had one of Toastmaster.org's new virtual backgrounds, and he looked so professional. He, he was seemed like a commentator at a fancy uh, event, like the Oscars nearly. Well, Toastmaster style there. Um, club coaching. Um, online meetings are a really, really, really good way uh, to help out the clubs uh, in your area if you're a districted club that has less than 12 members um, because this gives people the opportunity uh, to invite people to come. Um, I attended um, one of these uh, earlier this week and there was over 16 people at the meeting, uh, so that was great. So to sum up, online meetings are great. Zoom is great. 
uh, but just double check the Zoom security because uh, you want your members to stay safe and you want your uh, meetings to go fine so we can keep on having fun and learning together. Thank you very, very much, Aaron. Thank you very much, Sarah, for a very nice, it's, it's very authentic, true reflections of what really happened that can happen to us in our clubs and in our districts. So Zoom bombing has been recently become a comedy, I would say, uh, among those of Zoom users. After you use a platform, there are always good intentions behind everything. And then until one day that there's something bad about it. So stay, stay safe online. Don't worry. It's not just staying safe at home, but also think about like, if you want to connect with people, listen to good quality speeches. Some preparations have to be made as well. So give a round of applause again for Sarah. Thank you. Now, next person to me when I first met him is actually just last week, right? Technically speaking, if he's still here. <laughs> Obviously, he's still here. I met him last week, and what impresses me is that, wow, I have never met such a person that is dynamic, interesting, engaging, and most importantly is that with his poor lightings, no, I'm still joking, with his lightings, he can still connect with us with the nice vibe that you can think about. You just listen to his sharing and be mind blown away, okay? Now for, for him, he has been a Toastmaster since 2015, currently has finished one pub in Innovative Planning and ACBALB. He's also the area director of P2 in District 51 back in 2017 to 2018. He's also a vice president of public relations uh, back in 2016 in a club called the Yautama Advanced Toastmasters Club. And he's currently a member of Liquid Go Advanced Toastmasters Club, which that is the club that I met him that time and was like, wow, this person, I got to invite him because he's, he's, although he's like same charming charisma as I am, but he is way better. He's way better. And also part of a club called Lion City's Toastmaster Club. So let's welcome... Now, next and final finalist, panelist, Josh. Hey. Hi, good evening, everybody. Thank you, Aaron. How am I ever going to live up to what you just said? Yeah. Lucky I was on mute, so I didn't hear what you said. I just said, yeah, we'll just go for it. Welcome, everybody. My name is Josh. I live in Singapore. And today, the Prime Minister of Singapore said that we have to stay at home. So we're now joining the rest of the world and from, uh, from Tuesday, so we've got a few more days of, of freedom. Uh, from Tuesday, I'm going to have to live within my, my four walls. Yeah? Uh, and that's, gonna be, yeah, that's not going to be a fun sight. Now, thank goodness, all I can say is thank goodness for video conferencing. So what I'd like to do is start off, can anybody actually remember a time when they, hmm, let's say, before video conferencing was around. Raise your hand if you remember back to when there was no video conferencing. Oh, I can see a few hands go up, all right? I don't think actually any of you are that old. The very first video conference happened in 1956. It was done by AT&T, and uh, basically what they did was they took snapshots, uh, and every two seconds they would send a snapshot through to a video camera uh, in another booth, and that was how, so it was kind of like time lapse. Uh, kind of scary, uh, but but that was 1956. So I know that none of you are, uh, are that old. Uh, I, even I'm not that old, and I think I'm one of the oldest here. Uh, 1964 saw them set it up at the World Fair. They set it up in New York, Chicago, and Disneyland. Now I'm not sure why, uh, but I think Mickey Mouse lives in the whole three of them. Yeah. You know? So they're having troubles now. They chatted to each other in between there, and then the technology just went ballistic. 1970, it was offered to the public. Unfortunately, the, the size of the equipment meant that you had to actually give up one of your car spaces and leave your car outside because the stuff that they had to put in for you to do a video call was just so huge. Now they sold 1,000 units of these, uh, so not big sales, and it cost at that time $160 for you to make a 30 minute video call. Get that. So once that fell over, we had to wait then until 2001. This is when we started with the satellite connections and the very first satellite connections happened during the start of the Afghanistan war. There was uh, uh, correspondence, scooting information, uh, backwards and forwards to the US from Afghanistan and that was the start of video conferencing essentially. 2003 saw Skype being released. 
And then 2020 saw the coronavirus and the fact that we couldn't go anywhere. And hello, let's start using the technology. So it's been around for a long time. And now we're really starting to, to take the opportunity to use it and to stay connected with each other. Now, I just want to run through a few little bits and pieces uh, that I've come across while starting to learn how to use Zoom. My background is a, as a project manager. I use a lot of video conferencing uh, software, uh, but I never realized truly how hard it is uh, to, to get your head around some of, this, some of this stuff. So one of the first things I kind of want to go through is you always need to make sure that your mic is off when you are not speaking. That always helps by keeping everybody um, uh, the background noise quiet. So first thing you need to do. Of course, the other thing that you need to do is of course, make sure that your microphone is turned on when you're supposed to be speaking. The next thing that I would suggest is to make sure that your background, that there is no noise happening. I always find it really difficult when I'm trying to give a speech and there's some big cruise ship just trying to want to park right next door to my house. So try and not do that when, uh, when you've got something going on. I, I guess the other thing too is that I don't know if any of you have pets, uh, but uh, Fido, yeah, sit down. I don't know if any of you have pets, uh, but it's probably a good idea to lock the pets outside uh, while you're actually having your call. One of the other things too is that, you know, do remember that your camera is on and uh, don't just kind of, oh, hello darling, you're home, are you? Oh, so lovely, so how was your day? Okay. And the other thing of course is making sure that you have good lighting so that people can actually see you when you're at your screen. Of course, another good thing to do is make sure that you're wearing appropriate attire when you're talking to somebody. It's always good to, to appropriately attire on the top as well as on the bottom. I don't know if any of you have seen some of the videos that have been around lately, but it's always a good idea to wear your pants when the camera's on. Make sure also that the camera is at a suitable distance from your face. Unless, of course, you want your audience to be counting the hairs that you have up your nose. Now, it's always, I mean, it's, it's always good practice also that while you are listening to somebody speak, that you're actually taking notice of them and making sure that you're not doing something that's distracting. Now, I have to admit, they're a damn good set of nails, but not something that you want to do. Not something that you want to be doing while, you, while somebody is giving a speech. Thank you, Anna. I know you've done that. Another thing too is make sure that you always speak slowly so that people know what you're saying. Try not to speak too fast and in that way everybody will understand because we have a very international audience and therefore it's good to make sure that everybody understands what's going on. One other thing, don't be listening to somebody and then chatting and catching up with your emails or your WhatsApp while you're on there. It's not only noticeable, but it's also distracting. And one last tip coming from me, who has done all of this and more, is on the right-hand side of your screen, there's a chat panel, which is fantastic for putting a whole lot of information in and chatting with your friends and multitasking while somebody is speaking. However, it's not so good when you're writing, oh my God, this is boring, or, I'm so hungry, will he ever finish? Yeah, uh, who was that? Oh no, okay. So those are some tips, some practical tips that I've learned over the last few weeks in coming to terms with how to use Zoom. I don't know if any of you guys have done this, but I certainly have done all of them. And, uh, and I, I, I thank you all for spending the time with me and hopefully I've brought something that will help you in the future. Aaron, back to you and thank you so much. Thank you very much, though, Josh. I was expecting more as well again. Everyone had a good laugh, but if you actually open your webcam, you actually can see laughters around and enjoying. Let's give a round of applause to Josh for a wonderful presentation on the tips and stuff. Now, obviously, other than uh, interesting meetings, uh, 
we already had heard about all our panelists. So now there's only two choices for everyone to decide. Oh, actually three. One is that you leave this room. No, don't, please don't, okay? Next second one would be that you either hear uh, or you go for question and answer session, whereby you can ask any of our panelists on any questions you want. Or thirdly, you hear a surprise guest that will actually give a final five to seven minutes talk. Which one do you like more? Put it in the chat box of one, two, and three. Obviously, don't tell us if you leave. You can leave quietly. <laughs> <laughs> now, everyone can switch on a webcam because everyone's basis expression makes a big difference in online. Now, everyone use the chat and type one, two, or three because you get to vote for that. Now, this is a surprise that panelists do not know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyone else? You can actually use the chat box and type. It's not hard. Number one is you say that I'm so sorry. I have to leave the room right now. That's number one. Two is that you, you want to actually have the Q&A session right now, the question and answer session, whereby all your questions will be answered. I assure you that. And finally, the last one would be that you will invite the last mysterious speaker to do a five to seven minute sharings on how to operate Zoom online meetings and what are the don'ts that you shouldn't do. Two and three. Give us, give us a choice and count the votes. Everyone, everyone knows parliamentary rules, right? <laughs> Just joking. Surprise speaker, okay. But we see more threes than twos. I was expecting twos more. So now um, from the votes so far, the votes, the tribe has spoken that we have our last speaker that has to give a five to seven minute speech sharings. Is hidden within this crowd? Yes, that person is me. I'm going to give a five to seven minute sharing of things that you shouldn't do in an online meeting. Okay, so. Anyone, if you don't like me, then just like, I'm so sorry for that. So five to seven minutes on best practice and sharings from Aaron. So now finally I get to show. So we have Josh that talks about the contestant. Now I think it's more appropriate to talk about what not to do as a Zoom master, for example. And I will list out in top 10. Anyone love top 10, top 10 sharings? Number 10. Please remember not to unmute all P participants in the room because that will lead to chaos. We have heard lots of different sessions whereby people are muting everyone and everyone starts talking. We can even hear pets crawling, babies crying, and most importantly, we hear couples quarreling over like who owes each other $100 for the meal. So that is whereby we shouldn't unmute all individuals. Although you want to welcome them, but please avoid to click the unmute all button. Now, number nine. Number nine is a common issue that we'll face. Is that never, ever, ever, as a member, click the share screen button. Because you do not know what they see. Okay, that leaves a lot of imagination. I do not want to actually think too much about it. But when you think about as a Zoom master to make the whole meeting interesting, at least keep the sharings to the co-hosts. Do not let the sharings to participants because we may have Zoom trolls that shows us different things in the world that we do not want to see alive and on YouTube. So that's number nine. No, number eight is actually happened to one of our panels or two actually is that never click the accept button from unknown strangers of opening up your webcam yes some of us we usually happen to see like this whereby someone will say oh maybe i want to see that person's face and you you click on you being very nice and say ask to start video and then she or he accidentally click it and voila, you see her or embarrassing things online, including eating her dinner on the screen. Now, what number is it right now? Number, is it number seven, right? Number seven, it's also a similar thing, is that never do 
things live on TV. We actually have a live example over here, which is actually showing us what not to demonstrate online. Hi, Meijing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just spotted that, right? Uh, we do a lot of different actions and things online, and sometimes you think that we didn't catch your eye, right? But Zoom must actually observe everything. And thank you for closing your video after I share your screen. But the most important thing is that never really do whatever you want on the screen because you never know that people are watching. Okay. Now, number six. Things that we usually do online is that uh, we also have Josh mentioning this point, is that when someone actually unmutes themselves, you hear lots of different conversations and that person actually forgets about it, right? Be a nice person and help him to mute as a Zoom master, basic courtesy. Mute the person so that you will actually do two very important things that people will feel happy about. One, the speaker will feel much more calm because it's not managed heckling time, okay? There's a, there's a project for you called Manage a Difficult Audience, but it's not your time yet. Okay, so the point is that we want to let the speaker speak professionally and without any disturbance so that you have great quality speakers. Now, the second part is helping the evaluators because the evaluators wants to hear the proper whole chunk of evaluation. Imagine if you actually interrupt someone. That will be a really bad option for you. Now, what number am I right now? Five. Okay. This is actually for not just online, but it's for contests. I've actually talked and someone laughed yesterday, is that being a judge online, please do not rename yourself as judge, your name, and most importantly, show your face on the screen. You know how judges work because we have anonymous part. We try to rename ourselves, but sometimes some people are very nice and being very brilliant. They thought that this solution will solve that. Imagine that I close my video and you still see my face. Some judges do face this problem again. So make sure a tiny tip for other judges, if you are being a judge, uh, not just <laughs> online, but really rename yourself, sign out from your account and join in the meeting. Okay, that will be a very basic practical tip. Now, what number am I right now? I'm actually trying to catch everyone's attention, four. Zoom tip number four. Uh, it's actually shown by Josh just now, but I'm showing a different version. What he show is that some members do not really know where the camera is. Ironically, I don't too. And sometimes you will see people actually showing their lovely lips on the screen. And that will actually make tempted this. I would like to touch that lip or something. Like that. There will be some crazy creeps that's doing something different. But we also have people showing their eyes on the screen. But then it's not two eyes, it's actually one eye. So when we actually have that situation happening, please have a body lang language monitor in your club that actually tells our members how to speak and communicate effectively on the camera. Okay, so tip number three. Now the top three now. <laughs> the three is actually a true story. Um, there was a member somewhere around this world, I'm not mentioning which country, but definitely I've been there, is that they were actually zooming in the restroom. And you can hear the lots of different sounds like pop, and then flushing sounds. And everything that people do not know what they're doing, you can literally hear everything. Okay, never do zooming <laughs> meetings when you are. I know you love Toastmasters a lot, but really don't bring it into your private, private time zones, okay? This is one tip for a contest. No, it was not. Well, cont no, some people actually do it in the contest. I assure you that. That's one. Uh, one out of many. But don't do your business when you go for Toastmaster meeting. Be professional. Okay? Now, tip number two. Tip number two is actually something that I have actually been through a lot of times already. And I've been telling people not to do this, not to do that. And they actually do this. Now, what I mean by doing this is that know your functions well. What do you mean by know your functions well? Is that if I know that I cannot do my green screening, you wouldn't like your speakers to look at you like that, right? Unless you're a timer. Unless you're a timer, your face is unknown, literally. But the thing is that please make sure that if you know your role properly, uh, try your functions before you go online. 
And now tip number one uh, that every club I will recommend around the world you should do this is that tip number one. Always start the meeting like five minutes before the actual meeting starts. Give a Zoom tutorial or any platform tutorial before it starts. Simple. People are joining from every parts of the world. I have actually taught my division director. Oh, it's going to be live, right? I've actually talked to a very nice, lovely lady from my division <laughs> that is like on, on Zoom for like a lot of times really. Like I taught her for two to three weeks and she still forgets to know how to unmute button. She has been talking like this. This is called miming. But we have seen a lot of different mimings, etc. So remember to give them five minutes of tutorial so that they can test their microphones, test their sounds, test their webcam so that we can see them who they are. Very basic stuff. If you feel that it's very professional, there's one more bonus tip for you to do. Ever question yourself that in online meetings, we rarely see agendas? Do you see agendas online sometimes? I mean, like in the actual meeting, people was like, I need my agenda. Can you show me the rundown? Actually, this is one tip for people to know. Now in the chat box itself, for those of you who've upgraded Zoom, for those of you who are not using mobile, you know that there's a more function, right? Now for the more function, you just need to share files and share the agenda out. This is one tip, a bonus tip for everyone. If you actually set the whole motion in play by sharing your agenda, if you do not share the PDF, it's still fine. Share the photo. If you can't share the photo, it's still fine. Share your screen. This is the most basic stuff. Share your screen, let them understand the agenda. Now, now, now let me ask everyone a question though. What happens if I'm late and the meeting already started? I still want to see my agenda and I do not, uh, I'm not able to see it because I'm using mobile. Now, any tips for me? Anyone knows the answer for that? Yeah, I do agree on that uh, file sharing part, but if I actually set a password, do not let non, I mean like people from the globe to connect with us randomly. Uh, actually, it kind of defeats the purpose, but I mean like I only share it with Toastmasters, that's all. Now. Not just asking in chat box, but we just need to type the roll tickers for that day. Okay, when you type the roll tickers for that day, it's actually a mini version of the agenda. Now, I would do something more than that. Not just showing the agenda, but I will assign a buddy, a Toastmaster member from my club, to actually guide that person through. Because once you actually get that person through, that person will feel that I know my stuff now, I know how Toastmaster works, at least next time I'm coming back. Now, these are extra steps that you would do for Toastmasters, Zoom online meetings and stuff. So this is from not just a club, I also explain from the contests as well, uh, not contestants, uh, uh, attendees, and most importantly, the, the, the flaws that we happen online. Now, if finally, if you really want to know about some special functions, uh, later on, I will show it out. But now I would like to reserve the time for question and, question and answer session. How, how does that sound if I want to stop now? Is it okay? I just randomly table topics for seven minutes. <laughs> so give a round of applause for everyone for showing by today. Now it's the time for a Q&A session. So I would like to do it this way so that I would like to get you involved. Now, anyone, if you are switching on your webcam, please do, and you can raise your hand. I will pick you out and you can ask your question. How does that sound? Okay. It's better than just typing in the chat box. It will be much more interactive that way. And we get you on the on the YouTube too. Now, anyone wants to raise up your hand? Don't worry, we can't. We won't bite online. You know that even if I bite, it's too many miles away. Hi. I meet yourself. Yes. Hello. Good to see you again. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you again. Um, I have a question which I already asked uh, um, Panos, but I would like to turn it to you also. It's about area contests. Um, we have a problem, I mean, we were thinking, what if a problem arises with video or audio after the table topic question has been asked? 
and the person loses the connection and comes back, say, a few um, seconds later or perhaps even a minute later. Um, what are we going to do? Shall we ask the question again, the same question, but he already or she already uh, heard it? Or should we have a second question for this sort of, uh, of happening? Or should the contestant be disqualified? How would you solve this situation? Mm. Now, uh, I would like to say the first thing is that you came into the wrong room. <laughs> because today is actually for online meetings, don't worry. But then, uh, as I mentioned, we solve all the questions. So I believe most of our panelists already been through that stage, really, especially Sarah and panels. Would you like to take the answer? Or you want me to answer it? Maybe, maybe panels first. Thank you, Aaron. And uh, many thanks for your, for your question, Paula. So I came, with, I came up with some suggestions. First, that the contest organizers should establish some boundaries and make it clear that personal connectivity issues are not a responsibility of the contest organizers. So those that are competing, they are kindly asked to check their equipment and to make sure they have the best possible connection. Now, if that would mean connecting to, the, to this part, at least, of the contest through the use of mobile data. It can be a little bit expensive, but it's not that expensive, and, it, and often it is a more reliable solution. Now, together with that, a couple of suggestions would be, A, to, before the table topics contest chair asks the question, they can have a 10-second quick connection, microphone, and camera check just for 10 questions. So the, the contestant leaves the breakout room, joins the main room, the contest room, the main Zoom room, and then they have a quick check. And then they say, you know, name, question, question, name, and then they take it away. So this is one way to make sure that everything is working. And then we, we rely on the stability of online technology that it will remain stable for the two and a half minutes, the duration of the table topic. Now, if something happens and the connection breaks down, there can be a rule established beforehand, commonly agreed, that perhaps we can wait, let's say, up to 30 seconds and so that the connection stabilizes again. And this is a slight time extension also on behalf of the timer, providing that we can all see that the contestant is breaking up. Now, if that doesn't solve the issue at all, the contestant is certainly not disqualified because they haven't exceeded the time limit or we cannot prove that they have perhaps, they would renew the question or there are no valid disqualification reasons. So then what can happen is that we can invite the judges to judge based on what they saw, which of course it's not optimal, but certainly the contestant is still a, a running contestant in the contest. I'm sure, Aaron, you will have to add, you, you can add something to, to my understanding. So I'm giving the floor back to you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So, uh, was Sarah wants to continue on that or you want me to give the official answer? <laughs> okay, to answer uh, our dear friend's question related to contest, we stick by what is the golden rule in contest? We follow the contest rule book, right? We also follow the contest exception. So let me do a share screen right now. Now, you should be seeing the online contest speech exceptions. Now, based on your question just now related to table topics, and someone is actually doing something like this, I'm going to do two, two scenarios. I give everyone a brainstorming time so that you can be the great judges too. If I'm speaking and then like suddenly I'm talking like this is called lag out. Okay, I'm just acting out the part. So lag out doesn't mean that it's a technical issue. But lag out it means that if you can still hear that person, that person is still in the room, that's still fine. Although there will be some lag issues due to bandwidth. Now, if someone actually talks and then after which it jams you cannot hear him, he suddenly lops off. That is called technical problem. 
and we give 30 seconds on discretion of the chief judge for that person. So where does this rule come from then, right? Look here. Everyone can see it? If you can see it, give me a thumbs up. Okay, so you should note here that clause seven, the if technology fails during the contest, the chief judge determines the contest can no longer continue and or something like the contest will be re, uh, will be continued at a later time. This is actually for like if their contestants are not back or the judges are like not fulfilling the numbers. But what I'm saying here is this part. You see this part, the contestants should resume their speech at the point at which the technology failed and will be allowed 30 seconds extra over time for being disqualified. So we always give the extra 30 seconds for those of the contestants that got disconnected. Now, other than that part itself, we also look at, oh, then, then what constitutes as techni technology failure? What constitutes as failure? I just demonstrate two, two options. One is that if I'm still speaking and then you see my video is a bit laggy, that doesn't mean that technology is failing. That is actually because of that person itself and not in the good network and stuff. So that is actually not added to the 30 seconds. But if I got locked out from Zoom, that will entitle me to 30 seconds extra. And you do not need to repeat the question because the contestant will already know unless that person lags out at the first second. Then you will actually repeat the question because you worry that person may not hear the question. Does that sound satisfactory to you? Official Toastmaster rules backhand. Yes, yes, good, thank you. You're welcome. Any questions about online meetings? <laughs> Raise your hand if you don't, don't worry, don't be shy. There's no wrong answers, uh, no, no wrong questions. There's wrong answers, but yeah. Uh, hi, uh, Lati. Uh, Lalit, yeah, I have also written my question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now, uh, there was one speaker who wanted to share the screen and do her speech. During her speech, she could not suddenly see the timer. Something went wrong with uh, spotlighting done by the Zoom master. Can you advise us on how to professionally handle spotlighting, pinning, so that the Zoom master and the speaker and the others see what is necessary. Especially when it comes to the speaker, she, uh, she has to see the screen and the timer. How could the Zoom master do this properly and what should the speaker do and what should the audience do? Mm, good question though. This is actually a common issue among the online meetings and I know that Anna uh, will, will know the answer as well. Uh, I saw just now Roseanne actually demonstrate the solution, but I'm just letting Anna to, to let us know her answer. Yeah, well, um, from my experience, what I uh, already, oh, always recommend, have your own timer where somewhere around, especially if you know that you're going to share screen or you're going to have a presentation that will could happen to miss everybody. And then also or, always, always pin the timer. Make sure that you see the timer on your screen. And usually the contest chair should say that to the speakers in at the beginning of the speech. Make sure to pin the timer because the timer will always be on. Yeah. This, is, this is my solution, my two solutions. Hmm. Okay, so the pinning of the timer has to be done by the speaker. I'm speci specifically talking about a club a meeting scenario, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe we let's so, do let's everyone do do a demonstration, shall we? Yeah. Now everyone, uh, actually speak louder than words, right? Simple. For those of you who are using laptop, anyone using laptop right now, please give us a hand. Okay, so if you are using laptop, it's very easy. Click on the gallery view, okay? For those of you who don't know where the gallery view is, if you happen to see one big chunk of my lovely face on your screen and six little boxes on the top, you are in the speaker view, which is the main page. So beside it, at the top right-hand corner, there should be nine little squares. Click on it and you will see the, speaker, you will see the gallery view. Now, when you add the gallery view, this is, this is the part whereby everyone would need to know. Now, find anyone, just anyone, that has switched on their webcam. Just find anyone, okay? 
uh, you can pick a handsome guy or a lovely lady. Just randomly find someone. Move your mouse cruiser. I know Anna wants to be spotlighted, but don't worry. <laughs> but move your mouse over that. Uh, move your mouse cruiser over that person's gallery view. Now, at that part itself, on the top right-hand corner, there should be three little dots. Okay, three little dots. Click on it, and you should see something called the pin video function. This is especially useful for speakers uh, to find the timers, especially when they are sharing a screen. Uh, they can actually use the pin video whereby they will not see themselves, but they will see the timer on the very top. Anyone okay so far with the pin video for laptop versions? If you do, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, just like, you can voice up and say, I can't see it. Don't worry, I will try to fix it for you. Okay, for those of you who, are you who have finished the laptop version, now we talk about the mobile version. Now, what about mobile versions that you can do is that just also same thing. For mobile version, you only can see four person on that screen, right? If you swap to your left, just like Tinder, swap to the left, find someone that you like, for example. Now, when you see four little people and then you want to like, want to pin, oh, you saw the time already. If you like that person, like tap gently, twice. Okay, tap twice and then that person will be in full screen. If you don't like that person, don't let us know, do that. Okay, literally. And then that person will appear magically on your screen as the biggest picture of them all. So that is for mobile version. I, my, my phone has actually done around like 900 times of my demonstration of tapping gently and tapping hardly. So it can withstand a lot of pressure for that. But I hope I, that answers your question uh, related to that uh, scenario. But I think you want more because those solutions are not 100% foolproof. So I will give one more answer, which is definitely working for uh, presenters who are sharing the screen. For mobile users especially, Use the chat box. Type in green, yellow, and red. That will actually pop up in the mobile screen. If that person is using mobile and sharing the screen, that will work 100%. Now, I say 100% mobile. I didn't say 100% for the laptops, right? So what about the laptops then? If I'm going to share the screen, then pin video might be the best bet. I can assure you that pin video is the best bet for that. But it solves 85% of the issues because the remain 15% is that the person forgets to know how to unshare the screen. Yes, uh, and then if there's one more backup option, uh, I think that will be also foolproof as well. 99.99% <clears throat> is that we do the clap. Five minutes, we clap once. Six minutes, we clap twice. Seven minutes, we clap three times. And when that person goes over time, you can hear me, right? Even if you're sharing the screen. So that will actually work for laptop users. So that will be an alternative time. Uh, sequence for people who are sharing screen. Obviously, you have to beat the connection between them. Any panelists wants to top up the answer? Panels? I've also heard the words five, six, and seven being called by the timer who temporarily unmutes themselves and say five. Instead of clapping once, twice, or three times, five, six, seven could be an alternative way to indicate the timing. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you. And uh, our tech expert, uh, I have to mention our tech expert always love to give a lot of different challenges. Uh, this guy, I know him for a long time from District 73. Hi, say, say hi to yourself. Hey. <laughs> no, he actually pointed out a very valid question just now that you can't pin video when the host is spotlighting. So if you're doing the same thing like right now, I'm actually spotlighting him. If you do the pin, it doesn't work. So that's why for basic courtesy, usually we do not spotlight that person for an entire time. We actually unspotlight that person. Let it be auto mode, just like that. So if I don't, if I don't spotlight myself and then I talk, you will see me being the big screen. So that actually helps to keep the whole facilitation ongoing. Panels. If everybody keeps to the rule of keeping the microphone on mute while somebody else, another meeting participant, is invited on stage to talk. The automatic Zoom function of spotlighting works great. The challenge will be if we have one participant that is using another device as a microphone, perhaps speaking on a, through a mobile, so the 
the spotlight function will then be moved to the mobile, but if they're not using their mobile camera at the same time, then you will have the camera signal in one thumbnail and the sound coming from another thumbnail. I hope this makes sense. Then you will need to, to manually spotlight the camera signal of this speaker. It's a rare thing, but I have seen it. So this is, this is a, a case that you cannot resolve it using the automated spotlight. Perhaps Aaron can iterate this thought back using his own personal style in case I was a bit confusing. No, I think you have actually <laughs> answered most of uh, his question and it's actually really common though. Just give a round of applause for our panelists for that. And also our question, uh, that is a very brilliant question. Most, most people, if you actually have been in online meetings for quite some time, you will definitely find this problem existing by sharing the screen and then you cannot find the time. That usually happens. Anyone else who wants to ask a question? Don't worry, that's, oh yes, hi Jackie. Hello. Hi, uh, I'm Jackie Robin. I'm from Mauritius. I'm from Port Vista Toastmasters Club. We are the first Toastmaster Club in Mauritius. We are 20 years old this year. So uh, my question is, um, we are starting our first online session due to coronavirus. So um, I want to know, um, do we, have, do we need to have a paid version to have a full uh, session of a Toastmaster session online? So, or, or we can just use the basic one. What do you think? Because the basic is only 40 minutes. Hmm. Anyone wants to take that question for panelists? As far as I tried, uh, right now, due to the heavy usage of Zoom, you at 40 minutes you're off so the easiest and professional way would be to use a, a pro um, a pro account what you can also do is uh, set up two meetings and you will see that the first top, that the first part of the meeting is going to be on this id then we will have 10 minutes break and the second will start here but you have to be really careful because if you do that people will there is a chance that people will not go for the second part of the meeting from uh, from what i see to other clubs that are not using pro or what you can do is like uh, have a like super fast 40 minutes meeting but it's a uh, it's a choice okay thank you very much anyone else i think i think actually like uh, selena want to answer this question Here in Malaysia, actually, we got a sponsor account for our, from our district, but we, we need to submit our meeting schedule. So another way is there are a few clubs that are actually sharing a plot account. Because we, we have a lot of clubs having meetings. So you try to allocate, like, you don't want to crash your schedule, but you can share an account, maybe three clubs to share one account, or five clubs, Monday to Friday, different day, is, is another good way. Back to you. Thank you very much, though, for our panelists. I also want to give one more tip as well. Uh, if you're very worried about Zoom not being able to do like 40 minutes and you cannot finish the meeting, don't worry. <clears throat> Always when you try to start off a meeting, get the momentum, get the chemistry. Uh, my personal recommendation, if you have nowhere to go, there's no Zoom Pro. Usually we use Zoom Pro to actually last for a meeting that is one and a half hour or so. But for start, you can actually try to use Skype because Skype is free. The point get get them actually go for uh, the online option. Let them experience how it goes. Although different platform has different reliability, Skype is reliable a bit now. Uh, it's also free, but the thing is that when you have more than twenty and thirty five, Zoom is better than that. There's also other applications such as Blue Jeans. Uh, don't use Go to Meeting. That is really really bad. I assure you. I tried thirty six meetings. I crashed thirty times. My whole computer actually have to go into a warehouse just because of that. Uh, so uh, those are the some options. Uh, if you really want to try something also different is that try to go for a Google Hangout as well. That also helps as well. So at least get the momentum of trying different uh, tech stuff. And uh, when you try the rooms and you get used to it, then you will make, be the best decision maker for that. Obviously, we have some members here who are from China, like Rachel, uh, who is still very staying up online, not, not exhausted. 
Uh, she's from China and basically she cannot use Google. Know the restrictions that is limited within your own city and test it out. Really, go for the testing option. Test out different things. If you still want to go for Zoom Pro, it's not costly if it's divided by the members. Just think about it. Everyone chip like $1 and you actually can go a long way too. Hope that answers your question. Anyone else? We make sure your question is answered. That's why we are having a global panelist here. Just to answer your question. See how delicate we are? Hazel, do you have questions? <clears throat> don't worry, don't be shy. I know there are lots of invisible... Oh, hi, Elizabeth. Hi. I have a question um, for the panelists. They're obviously very, very enthusiastic about online meetings, which is wonderful. How are they dealing with their members who are less enthusiastic about online meetings? Any takers from the panelists? Anna. I have uh, in my area, uh, I have one club that is very resentful on going online. So what I did, I asked them to join one of the other clubs meetings because they are in different cities and just to make sure to see how it works. And then I offered them because I have a pro account, I offered them my account and to give it a try to have a meeting just to see how it feels, mm -hmm. if they are comfortable to do it or not. And ever since then, they had yesterday their fourth meeting. So it's actually, it's better because now they are meeting weekly instead of meeting twice per month, which they did before. So I think it's just give it a try. A set up, maybe set up an informal meeting. Let's have a chat. Let's have fun. Let's have a table topic session. That's it. Mm -hmm. And see how it goes. For, for us, it worked. Because Thank you. there was a lot of lack of enthusiasts there. We also have panels as well to want to chip in panels. I can say that uh, combining our first online meeting experience together with our tendency and our habit to be performing or in a performance mode at least during a Toastmasters me meeting can be a little bit too much for some members. So what we did is that we hosted a couple of socializing sessions over Zoom, we call it like a meet and drink. So mm -hmm. we created a positive association, like socializing online, before we implement the use of Zoom for club meetings. And the first one in particular, it went five hours long. <laughs> we wanted to socialize like so mm -hmm. bad. The next time our club members were expecting the use of Zoom, I'm, I'm not advocating for Zoom, it just happens yeah. that we, because it's, it's become a standard. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting to log on Zoom to be able to experience again, to replicate the feeling that they had during socializing. And that paved the way for club meeting success already from the very first online meeting. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you. And I also like to welcome Sarah to actually talk about this one, which is, we, we understand from different parts of the world on how they run and actually give a lot more insights than that. Sarah? Um, one of the things that we um, do is offer one-to-one um, -one, uh, meetings um, with people so they can come, um, they can see Zoom, uh, feel what it likes before they join. Um, but also at our club, we have a few people that aren't coming to the Zoom meetings and it's like, oh, it's not the same. I joined Toastmasters to get better at giving in-person presentations. Um, and I normally say um, coronavirus is here to stay. Um, maybe it could be a good idea to come out because you get used to giving a video interview, a video meeting, um, because we don't know how long we're going to be doing this. Because I think some people are just thinking it's going to be gone uh, like that, and they can be back on the stage. Um, so I think it's just more holding people's hands I'm helping them, showing them uh, the possibilities. Selena, would you like to answer that as well? I know that many, many panelists <laughs> share that experience. Yes, as the PPE of the club, uh, the education part, 
because uh, I, I know we need someone in the club to, to make the online meeting happening. So I know there are some members who hesitate to go online. So because of this online, we can cross borders. So in my first online meeting, the club online meeting, I actually even invited from Taiwan members to come as the evaluators. So we, we can invite all over us. We, we get someone who active in online meeting, let them come in to, to, to mix or online, be more cheerful, be more fun, be more happening, to influence the member who has the need to go online. So this is another way. Back to you, thank you. Mm. Wait, we have lots of different sharings though. I think in the online itself, if you see members being less motivated, it's because they haven't seen more. Less is more, right? You actually want to let them know about online actually brings a lot of different possibilities. Roseanne, you actually talk us about something about that? Yes. Um, Go ahead. We, I, I second all the comments that came forward. And there is another issue. We should not need to forget that when we started with Pathways, there were a lot of people that had a lot of problem with the new technology that Postmaster International is going to use. So in that case, we just need to understand that this is a learning process. And for those who are more motivated, it is our task to reach to those that are less motivated and try to motivate them and try to support them with any issues that they might have. Because in our country, we have a lot of elderly Toastmasters who doesn't use the technology. So now we're facing a major problem since we started in 2017 with Pathways, we already confronted that issue. So that is why now that we are invaded by the coronavirus and everybody has to go viral, this has become a more major issue for us in Curacao. But still we're trying bit by bit to reach all other clubs, members, like, uh, like I think Anna mentioned, or I think it was Sarah, I don't know, but somebody mentioned that by reaching other clubs, you know, to drag them and to get them participating. This is one of the easiest way for us to deal with it. And we don't need to be perfect again. It is step by step. We just need to be connected. And from there, we start helping each other. Don't forget, as Toastmasters, we need to be friends that helping friends. So I hope that I could have motivated you with this comment. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you very much. So really nice, insightful one. Uh, one more bonus tip if that is that if you see people who are very less motivated, get them involved. Let them experience for it. Like if I know that's, that's a member that's like very less enthusiastic, I will go and have a talk with him and her, or her. Really let mm -hmm. us know like the concerns that she or he has. And I was trying to do the one-to-one -one solution method to solve with her. Maybe going online with her side by side. Although it's coronavirus, that doesn't mean that you are separated by distance. You just need to wear a mask. Right? You can just wear a mask where you want and actually try to let her or him embrace it. Oh, there's so much possibilities. There's so much creativity here. And that person will try a bit more, willing to try before because you actually make the extra effort to consider about this member's concerns. I hope that answers your question. It does. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Um, hi, everyone. Um, I want to ask a question about online meeting. I'm Amy Wan uh, from Hong Kong. And then one of my questions is that I, I feel it's really interesting, uh, the phenomenon is that whenever I went to different online meetings, it's quite easily that the meeting will be overrun. So actually, I just want to ask for your um, our other panelists that uh, what is your observation of uh, this problem and how would you fix the problem? Because I'm, I'm not quite sure that why um, every time is mostly, uh, most, most of the time is overrun. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, I love this question because we are actually setting the example here. We overrun by 30 minutes. <laughs> but the thing is that it's because I think one of the common issue is uh, we love to share. Uh, we want to keep the time ongoing as well. Uh, but if you want to actually keep the things on time, you need one person. 
and that one person is very important. I know you know who the rule, uh, the person is, right? The timer. So if you have a very strict timer, you can keep the meeting within the time. So let's say, for example, I could have just say, global exchange meeting adjourned, and everyone that's like now is sharing time. So after the meeting time, it's equals to you can extend for as long as possible, right? So there's like my opinion, if you want to keep track of time on time to just have a timer that's very strict. Panels? Thank you, Aaron. I can also add to that that the second most important meeting role for being on time is the Toastmaster of the evening. But together with that, also the Vice President of Education and anyone that is involved into setting up the meeting agenda. What do I mean? If we set up our meeting to be two hours in length, then after our first couple of meetings, we know how much we can fit in those two hours in terms of content. And that involves the duration of the table topic session. It could be, let's say, four table topic speakers. It could be five. But we know when there is a roof in the, in the number of speakers we can have. And also when it comes to prepared speeches. There might be three. There might be four that can go in but everything needs to fit together in those two hours. So sometimes I see that certain meetings get carried away because the energy just feels right. And then maybe we have 10 table topic speakers. I've seen that, but it takes one hour just for those 10 table topic speakers. So in the end, it comes as no surprise that the meeting went over time. So again, have a meeting structure that you have pre-decided before the meeting starts and keep to it. That would be my suggestion from experience. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you. I actually want to invite our our friend, Josh. He is very like, why doesn't Aaron ask me? I know that uh, in uh, in Josh's case, because he has been to a joint meeting between TGIT and also uh, another advanced club, uh, which is his own club. Can you share with us uh, how do you keep track of time and making sure that it doesn't run over time? Hi, Josh. I gotta say, I've never, I've never been a timer, and uh, and when I run meetings, uh, virtual meetings, doing a, as a program director, uh, I always go over time, and uh, so I've not been to enough, I've not been to enough meetings to actually um, uh, have the role of a timer. Uh, but look, I mean, I agree. Like, if, if you've got a good timer, they're doing the the uh, the green, orange, red, and they're keeping people on time, uh, and you've got a good toastmaster to the day, good toastmaster to the evening. Uh, they're going to keep it on time, but I mean, I'm one of these people that uh, I don't know. There's a lot of lot of people out there who just enjoy sitting up all night and uh, and being part of this. I think Singapore Online. I just uh, asked them about some information as well. Uh, they said they start at nine o'clock on a Friday night and they carry on till like midnight, one o'clock. So um, I know people like 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 the structure, and I think that if you have good uh, good leaders, then you will be able to keep that uh, that time frame. Depends on your club and it depends on the meeting, I guess. Mm. What about anyone else? I think, um, what about Rachel? Yeah, she was like shocked. I was like, what happened to me? Uh, there's, uh, Rachel is actually the past president of uh, another club called uh, Smart Toastmasters. So would you like to share with us the best practices for timing online? <laughs> well, actually, I agree with the first speaker that having a strict timer is very important to uh to keep everything on time so it really depends on uh how strict the timer is but i also agree with um josh that it really depends on how the whole meeting goes if everyone is okay if everyone is happy to to share more information or like this meeting like everyone wants to share more then I think it's okay to run over time a little bit and we are also like happy to do so. That's my opinion. Thank you very much. Uh, back to the first speaker, which is me. You forgot my name, but don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, so those are the, a few tips. I hope that answers your question, Amy. Hopefully. Uh, no, like Amy is like, no, you don't. Right? Then private message me. You know my number anyway. But yeah, uh, any, any other questions though? Oh, just just to be disclaimer, she's Aaron? my mentee. <laughs> Aaron? Yeah. Hi. Are you, 
are you taking pictures of the of the screen for us because i'm noticing there are people leaving the session uh we actually did the uh, <clears throat> the the picture time just now uh, earlier on but the thing is that uh, we kind of ask everyone to switch on the webcam and say hello and then do pictures but we will try to answer one to two more questions before we have a closing picture time hope that works for you as well yes okay one more, uh, one to two more questions before everyone goes for a photo shot whereby you can go for a makeup too. Or for me, I need to tidy up my hair. <laughs> uh. <That's sexy. laughs> Anyone else? There's no wrong questions. Um, I do. Maybe Hi, I have a question. Hi. Um, because last time, and also Josh mentioned, when we are in the meetings, for any of the uh, assignment takers that their the, the audio is on and they are kind of like talking to someone or uh, receiving a phone call or something and they kind of leave us. Can we, other than we are the host, can we mute anyone we want to? For example, if I want to mute Rush. I just did the example, right? <laughs> uh, but, I, but you are the host. There is some kind that other than you, can we, can any of the, any of uh, we, for, um, I think, I think the questions for, uh, the answer for you is that it's not just a host, uh, yeah, that you can make other people as a co-host too. And the co-hosts also have that function to, uh, to mute people. So don't worry, we actually, as, Seriously, you actually dare to mute the host? <laughs> okay, so so even the co-host can mute me. Just letting you know. So that's actually a very good example display. That's usually for me. I will make uh, at least a couple of co-hosts so that if I'm too busy with my stuff, and then the other co-host notice the sound, they will actually help to mute. It's okay. just like it's mostly helping each other. And uh, I also have another question before we send in the meeting, a Zoom meeting for the safety issue. When is the time for us to send a registration form to others to join our meeting, other than we provide in the meeting ID? I mean, uh, I mean, Sarah mentioned this about safety issue, not publish our meeting Zoom ID in public as by asking the participant to register and then they will get the ID or something. Anyone wants to answer this question? Or, or maybe I was kick off first. Uh, for me, uh, if I'm opening to the globe, uh, there's also one more step that I might do. It's just called the waiting room function. Uh, the waiting room function is actually a function whereby I will filter anyone who is coming in with random telephone numbers or a handful of numbers which they never bothered to rename themselves, and we will actually filter that person off because that might be a potential one. But then we actually, if I want to be a, a, a person that is like, okay, I embrace it, just technical issues. I welcome that person in and ask them to rename themselves. If they don't rename themselves, then I'll type with him. Maybe he forgot to look or hear what I'm saying. If he still doesn't do it, then I might choose to remove him. Okay. Yeah, because that's actually helped to prevent any Zoom bombing and stuff like that. Anyone else wants to supplement this answer? Nope. Okay. I hope Sandy, I answered your question. I know Wiki has been. Oh, panels. I was actually trying to introduce a guest. <laughs> no. Got you off. There, a common question that uh, I believe concerns all of us is how about enabling the function where guests can join the meeting before the host? Now, I've been to several, well, maybe not several, but a few meetings where I was maybe 10 minutes early and the host came in literally at the last meeting, at the last minute. So I had to wait and hope that the meeting is still taking place. So that is perhaps a challenge because if the host is not early enough and some participants join the meeting room, but the meeting room is not open, then you can use the function to let everyone in the meeting, join the meeting before the host. But then again, you don't have a waiting room. So again, 
striking a balance between the two is a challenge that I have uh, encountered. So if that is of relevance to our discussion today, and if this concerns you, perhaps we can discuss this. I just want to make sure that we cover this point. Back to you, Aaron. I think that that, that point is actually quite different from the question that Sandy asked. I think your, your point is that uh, we welcome people to come in. That's actually one of the good practices to do uh, because we do not want to, it's just like you, you have a meeting in, uh, in an actual venue and there's no party that is actually opening the door for the guests and the guest has been waiting outside for a long, 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 long time. You want to actually make the guests feel welcome. So the door will be open for them to come in, at least settle down, test the button and stuff like that. You want to give this option. But on the other side for security is that what happens if there are Zoom trollers that enter in the room beforehand and may cause trouble. So it's like the do's and don'ts you decide when you become a host and enter there. So if they're troublemakers, you cannot block them anyway. So that's why there are lots of hackers around the world. You can't block every one of them, but you try your best to minimize the issues that will be faced in there. So I hope that will answer your question because there's no foolproof option around the world. If someone wants to harm you, they will harm you in their way of possibility. You can't block it, you can't prevent it, but we can reduce it. I know, I know some members, uh, uh, hi Thomas. Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is Thomas from District 118. I think that online uh, meeting is a very innovative uh, way to do the Toastmasters meeting. So I want to ask all of the panelists, what is the most creative section you have done uh, during the online meeting for all of the panelists? Uh, thank you. Mm, creativity. I think all of our panelists have creativity. Anyone wants to take up the first question, uh, the answer? Oh, Roseanne, okay. Yes, it was, it was the first time that I have tried with another club to do a stand-up presentation, but I was not well prepared. So I, I put my phone as my camera and with a standard, but uh, I didn't, you know, I, I couldn't focus um, so well to see myself within, within, the, the, within the, the screen shot of the, of the meeting. So it was a little bit blurring, but it was also like a testing meeting. So I had the opportunity to laugh about it, but I had the opportunity also to learn more how to do a stand-up presentation because most Toastmasters are sitting down to present their speeches. But we need to come to a point that we need to stand up and have stand up presentations. So you can still evaluate the gestures, the body movements and all that from a speaker. So I would, uh, I would encourage each one of us to try it out. Try to uh, have stand up presentations where you can you know, show it all. Okay, Toastmaster Aaron. Uh, panels, anyone else wants to answer that question? Panels, yay. Just, just going to shoot some creative ideas to you that we have ex been experimenting with. One, debate table topics. So while you are online, structure the table topic session as a debate. There's even rules to that, but let's just say you have two members of the team that is for the motion, that is essentially the table topic expression and two members of the opposition. So then you have like one, one person goes first in debates for the motion, then the other team, then back to the first team, then to the other team. This creates a lot of, uh, let's say, it's not really a competitive atmosphere, but creates a lot of energy in the room because then we expect the next speaker. It doesn't, keep to table topics format per se, where everybody gets an original question, but it is definitely something you can experiment with and practice your debating skills as part of your impromptu skills. The second thing is the introduce a game. There are a lot of online games that you can introduce in your table topic session. You can even choose to do some team building by launching a table topics marathon where you can be playing a game like the rhetoric game, 
and it gives you a platform and then you assign certain players and then you get prompted by interesting questions and challenges that we seldom get to try online. They involve body language, they involve singing, they involve other activities that we can practice and understand them as complementary to our speaking skills, the way we ordinarily use our speaking skills and capabilities. So again, I would find creativity as introducing a degree of playfulness into the meetings, which can be refreshing and be refreshing our members' interest. And then we can monitor, we can survey their response to see if this is an element that we could perhaps add again into our meetings. Back to you, Aaron. <laughs> Oh, that's me. I'm so sorry about that, though. But yeah, the fun part. Yeah, I just talk about the fun part, right? Uh, uh, we have Anna as well. Want to share your creative ideas before we let other people to ask questions? Okay. So uh, you saw me already using Jumpboard. Uh, you can also use because you said that it's not available to everybody. You can use Miro.com or Mural.co. Uh, you can be as a uh, Toastmaster of the evening, you can play activity as a uh, online session with the people. So uh, first the panel, the speaker should do this, or then the evaluator should do this. Uh, what you can do, you can ask them to bring something that represents something for them and make them introduce the, the top, the thing or the object, like me with the unicorns. So you can introduce the unicorn and let them talk about it for a second, for three seconds, 30 seconds. You can use everything you find in your room as a, a subject to improvisation. You can maybe add some music when you are introducing the speaker on the background, but you have to be like, you have to be tech savvy to do that. Uh, what I also use, uh, if you are close in the group, you can share the screen with pictures from funny meetings when they make funny faces because you have from the previous meetings and you have them on Facebook. So you can use those. It's like, maybe let me introduce you to the following speaker. You're like, mm -hmm, that's a picture from a previous. I have several pictures like that. And friends in my club, they make fun of me. But I think creativity, it's the, it's, it's up to you how creative you can be. Back to you, Aaron. Yeah, I, I do agree on that point uh, about being creativity is always the, the funniest thing ever uh, that you can think about. As long as you can think about it, you can bring inspirational methodologies to into your whole meetings. Uh, not just displaying yourself like that, you also can bring in new toys. Uh, it's, it's just let your mind think, the imagination part. My creativity part is that I actually uh, break, uh, create something called the breakout rooms online and then after which I have the one-to-one -one pairing session whereby one, one talks and one shares. So what do you mean by one talks and one shares? One actually stand up and present and the other person actually talks about the story. The person who talks will have to, uh, the person who talks just feel free to talk the stories, but the person who is acting has to act whatever happens. Uh, one more additional element is that you can actually go and watch my uh, YouTube video, which is related to adding some interesting roles for your meetings. There are different methodologies that you can think about adding joke masters, uh, themes, setting like everyone dress up like a Halloween costume. Uh, you can create a question master, which makes things interesting too, by observing how many times has Anna scratched her hair, for example, or or panels, how many times he has touched his moustache. So those are a few things. Or does uh, panels have his hair? But the thing is that we always have different elements in play to add on to it. Just, uh, just let your imagination well. So debate is one of the things. We have the para exercise, talent shows. Uh, we also have the round robin. This is just some ideas for you to think about. Uh, so let, try it out as long as you talk. I think Rachel is your president, right? I'm not sure for Thomas, because I know that he's from District 108, so I thought that you two come together. I'm so sorry if not. <laughs> because I also belong to 118, just letting you know. Yeah. 
So anyone else uh, who wants to answer this question? I know Letty actually answered this as well. I unmute, unmute, unmute. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I have a, a different uh, a question from a different area. This is about uh, renaming. Uh, people rename uh, their roles in very different ways. Now, our counter A simple capital A simple H dot capital C then no space dash no space your name is there any document which clearly states how we could rename ourselves in a meeting and sometimes there are more than one rows so my suggestion has to be to put them at the end of your name uh, any comments on this how to rename uh renaming part uh, yeah so panels roseanne i'll give you a turn uh panels first Lalith, uh, I would like to bring us back to a point that Aaron made earlier. Let's say you join a meeting and you don't have the meeting agenda, okay? And you don't want to interrupt and ask for it. Then if you click on participants, you see those club members that are taking up meeting roles. Now, what if they are labeled speaker one or SP1, SP2 and so on, and then eval one or evaluator one, so then you can locate them. You see, you immediately know the speed, the flow of the meeting, and then you know TTM for Table Topics Master, TME, ETMOD. We all know the acronyms, so I won't now go into explaining what the acronyms means. I hope we all know them. So let's say now you have immediate access then to all meeting roles without even have to look around. You just click on participants. An added benefit to that is that when we get to listen to several meeting roles and I'm referring to prepared speeches in particular, then in some meetings, it's customary to ask for one minute time to send feedback via private messaging the speakers. Then even if you do not know the speaker's name, let's say you're just a visiting a club, then you can easily locate the first speaker by clicking SP1 and then their name and send them a quick message for your feedback. So. I find that this is a best practice that increases the functionality and minimizes the time that you spend looking around, especially when you visit the club. And I suggest you try it for your club. Yeah. My question is, yeah, thank you very much. My question is, what are the standards? Now, if you look at here, panelists, panelist dot dot, right? You can write panelist minus sign or dash. So is there any document which really states these minute details? because people write all sorts of things. I understand that part. I just appear to be like, I think Anna would like to answer that question, right? Anna? I think we should Aaron? just make our own <laughs> rules. Rosa, don't worry. I will keep you, keep you in time. I'm so sorry. I've been squashed. Don't squash yourself, please, Aaron. <laughs> um, I think you should make up your own rules. I mean, if you decide that uh, you should have uh, speaker double points and the name or DT or uh, maybe the uh, if it's a DTM just DTM and the name just create your own rules I don't, I don't know if uh, Aaron maybe you you uh, you are more into into the team if there are any online ruling of the names I there think is, it's some it is okay there is so but then I would like to give Roseanne to talk about first hi Roseanne mm -hmm. Yes, Aaron. Uh, related to the renaming of the names you see from everybody, upright, there is the session where you can rename. It depends on the meeting you're having. For example, when we are holding the district executive council meetings, then the district director will ask each one of us to change our names by adding first our area director function or division director function so it depends on the host what the host wants for for everybody to name themselves during the meeting why does the district director do this because normally we break out in rooms so it is easier for her to send all area directors in a room breakout room all the division directors all the assistants it is better to function then but it is also important when you are participating at a meeting like this session for everybody to at least know who the panelists are, who the speakers are, 
or who the timer is, and then you rename that person's name by mentioning first the role, so that everybody who is participating have a clue of, you know, who is who and what you're going to do in that session. I was going to add something about what Aaron mentioned earlier. Um, Aria, you mentioned something and I was going to reply on that. Your last comment was about what again? No, I was actually trying to answer his question related to renaming. How do you actually uh, highlight those renamings? Uh, if uh, Let me actually check the participants right now. You will see that those naming with A's which should be on the top. But just, just letting everyone know about it. So we usually do like A and after which panel is so that all the letter A will always appear on the top. B will be the guests or the uh, B will be our members and C will be the guests. You can see how oh, it's I, named right now. Oh, I just remembered. Another comment I had to share with you was don't forget about the culture of your club. This has to mm. do with the, the mean, uh, the ideas about creativity. You can be personal cre creative, but you need to, you need to really you need to really consider the culture of your club maybe there are members in your club that doesn't like funny stuff so you need to be very careful while you are on an online meeting to follow the rules of the meeting so it is in the hands of the host to consider what is the culture of the club have you considered the members ideas the members considerations so don't just do things thinking that people are going to find it funny or going to enjoy it. So it is better for you to prior discuss these matters within your club to see what members really like or do not like. That was my last question. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, I do agree though. Uh, related to Josh points of showing how many know stuff, right? But when we talk about, no, I'm just letting you guys see that I'm actually having a very nice eye. Okay, but the thing is that when you actually try these functions, uh, really test it out and then ask for feedback. So do not try it endlessly on that part because you want to actually match the culture within your club. If your club is like, what are you doing? Stop being so playful. You're disturbing the professionalism in your club. Then don't do it. There are some clubs who do not like and tolerate this kind of methods. But for me, I would like to have creativity sometimes. So they tolerate me. So I have to thank all those people who who have tolerated me for all this different uh, funny stuff. Uh, but then it's just, my purpose is very simple, good intentions to make the whole club lively. So if you actually look at the participants right now, I purposely named you uh, B, and then you are question master. So you see how the sequence goes for our participants who are staying behind. This is usually what we, we separate ourselves into different names with A at the start, and after which even if we put ourselves as panelists, we'll still appear on the top. Do everyone see it though? Josh, can you see it? Yes. So this is just an example for, for those of you who stay until now. Uh, now it's already 11, so I, I will just say that really thank you everyone for participating here. Uh, we still stay behind, but at least I would like to make it officially urgent. We give one more extra hour already uh, to, to give this awesome greatness to all those participants today. This recording will be shown on YouTube as well. We'll send the link in the official Toastmaster group. So thank you very much. I will just put the gavel and I will stop recording. Oh no, I wouldn't say stop recording, but meeting are generally, but stay behind for questions. Keep on answering questions if you want. I will stay behind for a bit more. Guys, thank you so much for having me. I will have to move because my area has another meeting. So <laughs> they are waiting for me on the Zoom. So I'll have to, uh check out thank you so much for having me thank you so much for sharing it it was an amazing experience for me of learning and looking forward to meet you all again thank you aaron for making this happen thank you have a nice and amazing night thanks a lot thank you for taking your time over hey you aaron, just real quickly i'm i'm gonna head off as well uh we're getting late and it's been a, a hectic week so Thank you to everybody uh, for the sharing. It's been a fantastic evening. Take care and stay safe, yeah? Norris, let us know when you're coming to Hong Kong or I'm going to your place to get a beer. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, guys. Thanks. I'll stop the